Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about eye deformities in leopard geckos, which are pretty common in my experience and can happen for a number of reasons. So before we get started, I'd like to ask that you please subscribe and hit the notification bell and away we go. So eye defects can be a birth defect, so a congenital defect, or they can occur from injury at any point in life. They can also be found on both of the eyes or just one of the eyes. A lot of times birth defects or, or injuries that affect the eyes may also affect the face, so keep that in mind. First, we're going to talk about congenital defects, which are birth defects. So these leopard geckos or any geckos in general, really, this could be applied to any gecko that has um, eyelids. These geckos are going to have eye deformities that come from birth. So it'll be literally from the moment they pop out the egg, they will have this issue. This can look like eyes that are structurally normal, but smaller, such as in my gecko Tormund and Egret. It can occur to both eyes or just one eye. Egret and Tormund both have one eye larger than the other. So they have like one smaller eye. They can also have underdeveloped eyelids. Now this means that there are no eyelids at all or that the eyelids are misshapen or that the eyelids don't meet in the middle, like in where eyelids meet right here, like they don't touch. This has happened a number of my geckos, including Marjorie, and I will feature them all on the screen. So for example, Marjorie, her eyelids don't meet in the middle. Mira has underdeveloped eyelids, which means that like her eyelids never properly formed over her eye. The same can be said for Rago, but Rago is missing his eye entirely it looks like and I'm not sure if it's just because they like shriveled up and dried or if because he never had eyes so he's a little bit of like a, a more severe case another birth defect that can be seen in geckos is eyes being too large but a lot of breeders will choose not to breed geckos whose eyes are too large for their face now this can be seen in my geckos Renly and Brienne and I'll include pictures of them on the screen but their eyes are too big for their head and it often leads to issues with depth perception or with shedding on the eyelids you may I notice that geckos who have congenital birth defects of the eyes may also have other issues associated with their skull. They might have a strange skull shape. They might also have um, deformed jaws such as an underbite or an overbite. In uh, Egret's case she has an underbite and in Tormund's case she has an egg-shaped skull so her skull is shaped differently. You may also notice that geckos with congenital eye defects also have other facial problems like Rago, for example. He has his cleft nostrils, which that means his nostrils did not form all the way at the bottom, so they're open. And I've also noticed that some geckos with eye defects can even have neurological conditions such as Tormund and Marjorie. Both of them have neurological issues. Now I don't know their entire genetics, so I can't say whether or not that that plays a genetic factor, but at the very least I can say that since both of them have eye defects, there might be a correlation between having neurological problems and eye defects. Now congenital birth defects can happen for a number of reasons, but most of the time it'll be from incubation fluctuation or bad genetics. Now bad genetics could just mean that like a pet quality gecko was bred such as like Brent Renly or Brienne if either of them were bred their baby would probably have very large eyes and then in situations of incubation fluctuation it often causes one eye to be larger than the other or it causes eyelids to be disformed or it causes the eyes to be really small now let's talk about injury because a lot of geckos can have eye problems due to injury that occurs after birth and it can occur at any point in their life I have seen some instances where a gecko hurts its eye, like it punctures its eye on decor in an enclosure or it gets bit by another gecko, and the scar tissue builds up around the eye so that the eye is no longer visible or it's partially visible. Sometimes the eyelids will not like be shaped normally after an injury as well, where the eye is still visible but the eyelids may be misshapen or scarred. Another issue is that stuck shed can build up over the eye creating an eye cap. This is very dangerous because it causes infection and blindness and a lot of times these stuck shed eye caps have to be removed with extreme care and especially if like the worse they are sometimes it's just like a couple layers of stuck shed that's making the eye stay closed because it's irritated but sometimes it can build up so terribly that it's an actual mass of skin dead skin that's just hanging on the outside and with each shed it gets worse and so those geckos will have a lot of visual impairment or blindness from those situations even after the shed has been carefully removed. I would recommend someone that is medically trained to do so, like a veterinarian that works with exotics, or someone who's a rescue and has done this before, because in those situations it's very delicate because it's on their eye and their face, and so it's it's not it's not like removing stuck shot off of a toe, for example. It's their eye, so it's it's very delicate. Sometimes geckos may have 
completely fine eyelids but their eyes might be blind this could occur for a number of reasons i know that some albinos who are sensitive to light by the way if they are exposed to light for a really long time they can be blind vitamin deficiencies can cause blindness um age probably can cause blindness so if you notice any like clear film over the eye it could be a bacterial infection that can cause blindness there's a lot of ways that, that the eye can actually become blind without the eyelids being affected so i also wanted to address that as well and another one that can cause a strange looking eye is actually not an issue with the eye at all but an issue with an abscess or a tumor inside the face now an abscess or tumor inside the face will cause the eye to bulge out of the skull it's very alarming looking and it's hard to tell that there's obviously not something going on underneath you know what i mean like it's not just the eye usually it's like the cheek and the side of the head that start to expand as well but even in cases of small tumors and abscesses it can push on the eye and cause the eye to pop out and um, look look definitely like something is wrong so that's another type of injury or issue that can cause an eye to look different now there are some things to keep in mind if you have a gecko that has eye issues whether or not those issues are from birth or if those issues are from injury whether or not those issues were prior to your care or during your care there's a few things you can keep on hand to always be prepared to deal with eye issues in geckos. So I'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong. I'm terrible at pronouncing things. I apologize in advance. I will include it on the screen how it's actually spelled out so there's no confusion as to what I'm talking about. But teramycin is a great over-the-counter antibiotic. You can literally order it off of Chewy and it's like a little tiny bottle and it's an antibiotic ointment for eyes and it's safe to use in geckos. It's not going to treat severe cases of bacterial infection but it helps to prevent infection and treat minor infections, especially if there's like an injury. You're also gonna wanna have saline solution on hand. Saline solution is just something that like you can squirt in their eyes. Um, of course, be very careful with this. You don't wanna squirt too much in their face, you know, and have them have them just be all messed up with saline solution. But you know, you can just use a little bit of it like out of a dropper in their eye to help clear any debris that's in the eye, or if there's any irritation, it can help keep the eye clean as well. So if your gecko gets an injury to their eye or if it starts to look like their eye is irritating them, saline solution is a really great step to take. And then the teramycin would be the next step past that. If your gecko is starting to like hold its eye weird or starting to just be like licking its eye a lot, it's possible that there's stuck shed in the eye. Keep in mind with leopard geckos and African fat tail geckos, geckos that have eyelids, the shed can be stuck on the interior of their eye and you have to be very careful removing this shed and making sure that it's all out properly. I would recommend taking a Q-tip and moistening it with saline solution or water if you have that on hand and not saline solution and just gently rub on the part of the eye that has the shed. I would not use tweezers. I would not use your fingers. Don't forget, these are their eyes, not their toes. So you have to be very delicate with them. If you rub the shed gently enough, it will start to peel up. And once it starts peeling, it's very easy to come off. All you have to do is just keep rubbing along the direction of the shed and eventually it'll pop right off. Now, keep in mind, the faster you get to this shed, the better it will come off. So if you wait a long time to address this shed and there's multiple layers, that's going to be problematic. But if it's only one or two layers and they just shed, get on it quickly, you'll be able to get it off with ease, as long as you are gentle and patient. Now, if you are taking in a rescue or if you, without realizing, caused your gecko to have extreme stuck shed on their eyes and any part of their eye, the eyelid, the interior, the exterior, wherever, you can seek out the aid of an exotic vet who is going to be more trained and more capable of removing this shed in a way that will not traumatize and hurt your gecko. So I would reach out their help if you are not comfortable doing that. I also recommend that you address any husbandry issues if this is something that you caused. So say your humidity is too low or you're not offering a humid hide or you have eco-earth which happens to irritate the eyes of leopard geckos from time to time. So just address any husbandry that might be causing the issues with the gecko's eyes now of course if it's a congenital birth effect it's probably nothing that you can do to change it but if it's something that um, is caused by husbandry you can avoid the issue in the future by fixing it right then and there I'd also like to add that gecko's eyelids will grow over sections of their eye if they feel the need to. So like my gecko Marjorie, her eyelids don't meet in the corners. And so because of that, her eyelids like grew like a little film right there and it sometimes peels off and then grows back which is weird. So just something to keep in mind. If your gecko has some sort of eye injury, that might also be the case where their eye 
may like try to compensate and so it'll grow skin um, but either way it's always good to be aware of those things and to constantly check on that to make sure that it's not actually something worse like a bacterial infection or a fungus or anything like that like I said, it's good to have the advice of an exotic vet, especially if you have a gecko that has special needs because of a birth defect or because of poor husbandry, whether it's with you or prior. So it's always good to have an exotic vet that you can consult. And if you feel like I didn't address the issue that your gecko is having with its eyes in this video, please make sure that you seek the advice of an exotic vet or even just uh, someone else who has leopard geckos because I'm not going to know every single thing, you know what I mean? So I have experience with quite a few eye deformities, especially birth defects, but I, uh, I don't know everything. So make sure that if your issue was not addressed by this video that you seek out an exotic vet and you seek out someone else who keeps leopard geckos and see if they know. And with that said, th I don't have anything else to say about eye deformities and leopard geckos other than just make sure that you're doing your best to keep their eyes healthy and clean and shed free whether that goes for geckos who have birth effects or whether that goes for geckos who are completely healthy and have regular eyes. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below and I'll be happy to address them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!